Doodle Bud here. Today we're looking at the Sentry Pen sent to me by Gravitas. A solid brass pen. Let me give you some other facts. It's big. <laughs> Almost nine inches. It's heavy. It's been shot at by a laser. And it might even come in handy for self-defense. So I don't recommend doing that with a brand new pen. It was really the glass that did it in, and especially the fact that it's brass. So uh, don't say I didn't wear it. I got a little carried away. If you're gonna try that, which you still shouldn't, go for the steel one. This is the Sentry Pen from Gravitas. This is pen number two, pen one I reviewed was their cool little pocket pen. Check that out if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but here we go. So this is a much, much, much bigger pen and much heavier pen as well so solid metal pen this is brass they also have stainless steel uh, also copper so those all weigh in at a seriously hefty 90 grams this is the heaviest pen i've ever held there is an aluminum version on this as well all of them have this nice uh, stainless steel uh, 304 stainless steel metal section with little tiny micro grooves which also appeared on the pocket pen to give a nice grippiness on the pen. So we're gonna roll through this and uh, you all saw that picture of a laser shooting this pen and go, what is this about? Is this clickbait? No, it's not. That's how the pattern got on the pen. And I reached out to Ben Walsh, who's from Gravitas Pens. He, he's a one man show, he runs it. And said, I know it's your own deal. You did this all yourself, but would you be willing to share a little footage for the review? He said, Okay, sure, let's check it out. So that was pretty cool. I love lasers. My engineering background has a lot to do with lasers, whether it's laser ablation or uh, 3D laser measurement systems. Uh, there's always something to do with frickin' laser beams. But here you go, uh, pointed ends, a little bit smushy now, that's okay. Uh, you know, sort of that minimalist design. We got the Gravitas logo right here. So that's burned in first, and then you can see over top the Paisley pattern is shot in there as well. So yeah, he, he bought a little lathe chuck, a stepper motor, uh, the la obviously the laser assembly, all of that with the motion system software and just started playing and here we go. So he does this on several of his pens too. So uh, if this pen is, is not your style, he's got some other ones too, which is really great. But let's roll through it. So it's very simple. You know, there isn't all these crazy details, no finials, nothing like that, other than it's made really well and we'll go through so where's the start here here it is it's a good reference point we can do two turns i believe it is to uncap the pen and <laughs> when you get brass you're gonna get this ring so if that drives you nuts yeah be mindful of that but overall the, the pens make quite well just like his other one i did full metal pen like i said stainless steel section the reason it's black is it's a uh, pvd coating on there comes with a uh, converter as well and also ink uh, cartridges too and even uses premium ink and here is his converter so the the pocket pen doesn't take uh, a converter it's just too small but he even uses a premium converter on his pen which is nice he even gets the logo on there see it's all these little details it doesn't impact the functionality of the pen same with this converter this is a much nicer converter as long as ink goes into one and delivers the ink should be good and that's true but he steps it up and gets a bit of a nicer looking converter and nicer feeling it does unscrew for servicing it is uh, plastic threads that are quite small and metal so 
I'm just showing you this for the video. I really wouldn't recommend doing this unless you absolutely need to. The nut comes off along with the uh, piston rod here. It slides back in. So if you're going to be doing this for whatever reason, you got a really uh, nasty ink to get out of there or whatever, um, you know, grease it up and then uh, put it back on. But try not to do that too much. Just impacts longevity. But yeah, nice and smooth. Lovely converter. Comes with it, which is great. It's a uh, Yovo nib assembly, just like on his other ones. This has a 1.1 millimeter stub. I figured the big nib goes well with the big pen. Everything, again, threads are all really nice. The finish on here is really nice. I will show you a couple little things if we can get some. Uh, let's, oh boy. Okay, finally got the shot. I'm having to manually move the, the pen in and out to get, but you can see at the bottom of the bore, way down at the bottom there, you can see there is a little bit of tool chatter mark down there that's just because to get that surface super smooth it's really expensive tooling he's just honest like look i can't afford that right now it also costs more for the pen so that's what it is but he doesn't he just leaves it there he you could put something in there to cover that and hide that little bit of chatter but he's like that's what it is for the world to see um comes on you know you got such nice threads because brass gives really nice threads they really really do and on here too just like his other pen there is a little groove here to accept a uh, o-ring and that would just sort of help with friction mainly so that you do have the potential for this to come off i haven't had that with the brass one at all i've, I've knocked this pen around quite a bit as you've seen uh, never had any issues with that coming off. So maybe it's just on certain materials, it might be more prevalent. Um, so there's an O-ring for that. It all would sort of seal the pen a little bit too. That's not my favorite way to use an O-ring for sealing. I pointed it out the other day on the Wingsong 699. It's better to kind of um, squish an O-ring down versus to squish it like that, especially with threads. Um, I, you know, again, this is maybe a bit of a red herring and uh, we're not having to pull a perfect vacuum and have perfect seals. But uh, if your design allows it, it's always nicer to have the O-ring so it gets compressed like that versus changing and putting force in the diameter, especially when there's threads on it. So I don't know, maybe even he, he drops the first couple of threads so the threads don't gall up on the, on the O-ring. So you can make this thread part here a little bit longer knock off the first few threads so that way threads aren't chewing on that o-ring that would be a uh, yeah that might help a little bit anyways that's a little uh, nitpick as i always do just thinking out loud but overall threads are great pen goes together wonderfully i'm going to do a, a size comparison a writing sample and uh, you know what i did a, a close-up of some of the ablation here so you can see what this actually looks like up and close because Whenever I uh, dealt with laser imaging, we'd have to go off to the lab and check out the results. So uh, I don't have a scanning electron microscope, but let me show you my cheap little Amazon one. So just did a few levels of magnification here. This is basic, so you can see the pattern that's getting zapped into the pen. Each dot is an individual pulse of the laser. You can see the, the micro groove finish there on the pen as well. Yeah, it's neat to see that pattern. You can even see the little, uh, what's called banding the alignment between each rotation and uh, resetting the laser and laying down the pattern. That's a little thing that happens when you do that. I used to do research on that as well. Let's get a little closer up next. Zoomed in a bit more just so you can see the individual dots. If my setup allowed for it, I could measure that. But on a curved surface in this terrible microscope, I just can't quite do it. So I've picked a few other larger pens here just to compare. We have a Dolce Vite. This is the Marta Modena, not the real Delta version. The Asfine V169. Of course, the Sentry Mont Blanc 149. Opus Omar 88 and a Noodler's Ahab. And here we are with the exact same pens all uncapped. So now you know what it looks like. Uh, basics on how it's made, how it goes together, size comparison, some other finer details and whatnot. Writing samples coming up, but I thought before I do that, I'll just go through the pros, cons, likes, dislikes. Uh, overall, you know, I, I like the pen. For being this heavy, it's, you know, well balanced just because there's so much mass everywhere and this is quite heavy here. But I understand, you know, that's also a con. Having a pen that weighs this much, especially posted, is definitely not for everybody. Check out the aluminum version, maybe, if you want the larger pen. He has one that's smaller. It's called the Entry. Similar thing, just not as chonky, not as thick 
and also has all the material choices there too. So the weight can be a pro, but also it could be a con as well. The deep posting, huge pro. I really like that. That's consistent across his other pens too. I really like the section for metal pens. That's an Achilles heel. He's that's, you know, very innovative. I like the stainless steel. I actually kind of like how not all of his pens, but a lot of them, he does that because you don't have to worry about back weighting uh the pens especially with metal ones especially if you put the cap on here it's just so much it's going to do it no matter what but uh for a lot of the pens having more weight up front i do kind of like that writing feel it just sort of keeps it down onto the page that's quite nice you may not like that i you know i do so that's a personal thing um other than that like the the, the appeal appeal of the pens quite nice the the laser blazion finish on this one's really cool i'd say the biggest negative uh, would be, you know, I, I think I would prefer this if it had a roll stop uh, or a clip. And the biggest reason for that one now, you might like minimalist designs. I know a lot of people don't. They, they just don't like how a pen rolls. But especially on a heavy one like this, it's just a little push. And it's got lots of momentum, so it could take off pretty quick. So that would be something, whether maybe there's a, a version 2 where you have the option. If you like the super smooth and all that, that's great. Um, but uh, uh, some type of roll stop or faceted would be cool if there's not going to be a clip. I think the market uh, would like that. Other fountain pen users would like that as well. This I also really like. So instead of the classic box that you just keep and you don't know what to do with it, how about you get something that actually is useful? So these little sleeves, this is nice. I, I don't, I'm not an expert on leathers, but I don't know, is this real leather? Possibly. It feels nice anyways, so that's good. Stitching is good. He's got his logo design, and then it's functional. So you got something to keep your pen in. So, you know, that's, you know, for the roll stop, if you're using it, then you put it back in instead of checking on the desk. That sort of helps, right? But also just protects the pen, especially something like this with a beautiful finish on that. Uh, it would suck to get that chipped up. So he thinks of, the, of that, includes that with the pen. One thing to notice with these heavy ones. So if you get a Sentry in one of those heavy metals, um, just, it's so substantial. If you have it on the desk, right, you just pick it up quick. Well, I, jam I jammed it in there, but if you didn't really drive it down hard, but let me do it again. If you just put it in there and you, and you kind of pick it up quick, the pen can come out. So if you're not thinking you just pick it up, it could fly out and maybe it rolls off the desk now and you ding it, right? You won't break it. <laughs> you might break what it hits, but, uh, you could ruin the finish on the pen there a little bit and you'd be upset. So just be aware of that if it's in the case, especially the heavy hitter here, you grab it a little more firm on the sides versus it sliding out. So again, pro with a little warning on that too. But I'm gonna finish things off, writing sample, voiceover, close things out, and we'll see it pretty quick here. But let's not let a good mess go to waste. Let's put a little drop of ink onto the pen and uh, you'll be happy this is my finger and not yours. Let's just show you, wipe this off. There you go. So if you want to give uh, your paisley finish or whatever a cool dye job, eh, that actually looks kind of cool. As far as performance when writing, the pen is quite lovely. As I mentioned, all the nibs are checked and uh, it shows I haven't had a bad writing experience yet. Also, check to Gravitas Pens on their website to see the full lineup. And another thing, check out other reviews of this pen online as well. I like this type of stuff, precision machining, these types of finishes, all these little design cues. So I'm already going to be biased with something like this. This uh, really excites me. Check out some other ones so you can see the other side as well. So thanks for watching and also thanks to Gravitas Pens and Ben Wall for sending uh, some lovely pens to review. Uh, leave some uh, questions or comments down below. As always, the likes and subscribes are super appreciated. Uh, all the people who've been watching and, and commenting and whatnot, this has helped my channel grow so that pen makers go, hey, let's send some pens to Doodlebud. And as a thank you, um, of the five pens, I'm going to be giving one of them away. Do you want to you want to sneak peek which one it's going to be so uh, that will be coming up keep your eyes peeled so you can get one of gravitas pens and a chance to win that so there we go questions comments like i said hit subscribe if you haven't it makes me feel good and we will catch you next time